back with comedian Dober Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. So I'm here day one without my wife, and I didn't think about logistically how difficult this was going to be. How am I meant to do my podcast? Well, I can do it at night, that's fine. But I'm meant to be doing another podcast tonight, and there's just not going to be enough time to do everything. So I had to dump my kids on the next door neighbor just to do this podcast, just to get me a break. It's been go, go, go this morning. Fucking kids woke up at 6 a.m. for whatever reason, probably because I woke them up the morning before at 6 a.m. and they crashed out early last night. So they were up at 6. I didn't get to sleep till 1. And then I was like, I need to wear these two out today. So fucking this morning, I took them to the park for two and a half hours Turns out they have more energy than I do and now I'm fucked and they're still running around. I just don't know where kids get the fucking battery. It's just unbelievable. They just never fucking stop. But the fucking Irish couple a few doors down are just an absolute fucking lifesaver. The kids go over there for a little bit, but then all the kids come over here. So it's either zero or four. But even when it's four, it's okay because they're sort of just arguing with each other. If you can handle just being in noise and hearing screaming and fighting the whole time, you're fine. Again, I have no idea how single parents fucking do it. Especially if you throw in some work. How do you do it with work? Like, I'll get through the next eight days pretty easily, but I'm clearing my whole fucking schedule. And the kids go to school and childcare, so I'll still have that six hours per day (laughs) where I can fucking actually do more than I usually would because my wife isn't here. If I want to go to the gym and spend four and a half hours doing my deltoids, fucking I will. So that's fucking fine. But I can't imagine being like, I suppose my mom. My mom had to deal with two of the worst fucking kids Ever. Maybe not ever, but we're fucking, we'd be in the top 1%. My brother ended up in jail and I don't know how I dodged it. So that's the level. And just fucking like money wise, if you were fucking struggling with money, so you're looking after these fucking absolute nightmare kids, you got no money, you're working like a shitty job, even though mum didn't work pretty much the whole time. Oh, she had bouts. (laughs) She had bouts of fucking work. Not long stints, but she did a couple of things here and there. She was a cleaner for a little bit, which made no sense because our house was fucking an absolute mess all the time. She actually had a second-hand store for a little while in the middle of Frankston. (laughs) Frankston. Frankston in Melbourne back then was like, it was the drug crime capital of Victoria, if not Australia. And mum thought it was a good idea to open a second hand store, get a mortgage on our house to open a second hand store in Frankston. The only people coming into fucking second hand stores in Frankston are heroin addicts trying to sell the shit they just stole. <laughs> No one, uh, and people looking for the shit that just got stolen off them. No one's walking into a secondhand store in Frankston going, oh, I might pick up. She had a dental chair in there, a fucking dental chair. I'm like, what person is going to buy that? What person is just going to be walking through the streets of Frankston and go, I need that fucking secondhand antique dental chair? Even I knew that back then. I was like 16. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Anyway, as you can predict, the business went under and she ended up having to sell the house. But I don't think she needed to sell the house because of the secondhand store going under. I think it was more the pokey addiction. Anyway, I fucking totally understand. I forgive mum for everything. That's fine. I wouldn't be thinking very straight either if I was trying to raise me and my fucking brother by myself. 
it would just feel like a fucking jail. No money all the time, no rest. Your kids are always getting bought back by the fucking police. I always wondered why she drunk cast wine, but it's because she couldn't fucking afford anything else. <laughs> and that is the shit that will quickly and cost effectively dull the pain. Let's fucking let's fucking hash this out. What would happen if my wife wasn't here? Because she is the single point of failure for this family. She called herself that the other day. I'm like, nah, that's not true, but it is. The Patreon and the money coming in from stand-up is okay, but it's not enough to rent in Sydney and raise two kids and pay for jujitsu. <laughs> so I would 100% have to go back into the cranes, and the cranes mean... I have to wake up at 5 a.m., possibly 4 a.m., which isn't possible. That's not even fucking possible by myself. What the fuck are the kids going to do? I can't drop them at fucking before school care at 4 a.m. So I'd have to find a job that starts a little bit later. It has to be like a fucking 7 o'clock start if I'm by myself, which means a pay cut. And then if I'm taking a pay cut, it means more hours. So I would have to start work at like 7.30. I don't know what jobs you get that start at 7.30. But it means I'd have to work till like 4.30, 5 o'clock. So pick the kids up late. And then I'm absolutely fucking cooked because I've worked all day. And then somehow I got to squeeze in my podcast and try and get to gigs. What the fuck? How? This is if I'm living somewhere where there's absolutely no help. My mum had absolutely no help. There were no friends with kids. There was just it was just her. No family around, just her. The more I think about it, the more I feel like she did an okay job. So fucking forget stand up. I don't know how I'd be able to do stand up. I guess I'd have to <laughs> I would have to find a fucking girl. And probably the only girl available would be like a girl with three kids. So then it's a fucking five kid family. She has a few young kids. So with childcare and everything, it's not even worth her going to work. So all I've got really this girl for is so I can work longer hours and bring more money in. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, this is a fucking living nightmare I'm going through. I've never really fucking thought about this. <laughs> with good reason, to be honest with you. So now I'm smoking darts again because I'm just stressed out of my fucking mind. I start having a drink because there's fucking nothing else I can do. I get back into drinking fucking heavily then it's just like fucking over. I lose my job. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, this is fucking brutal. I get kicked out of the house because this fucking chick, she's looking after five kids now and she gets more dull if I'm not in the house. So now I'm fucking on the street drinking heavy and. All I'm thinking is just get enough money to get to the Himalayas and just fucking meditate your way out of this. That's the only thing you can do. <laughs> do you know what would happen if it was the other way around? If I was gone and my wife had to do it all herself? Fucking virtually nothing. I feel like I might need to step up my game a little bit. <laughs> No, it's not the whole story. Like, there's a lot of shit I do that I'm leaving out just to make this podcast more entertaining. But essentially, my wife would be all right and I would be completely fucked. So maybe I might do a few more surprises, to be honest with you. Might get a little bit more on board with the surprises. Anyway, that was confronting. I didn't know I was going to speak about that today. There's a little food for thought, hey? 
please, for the love of God, can you join the Patreon now, like today? If I can get 200 more Patreons, the story changes. If I can get like 400 more Patreons or 500, if I have a thousand Patreons, I leave my wife with the kids. I'm like, see you later, babe. You're holding me back. (laughs) Oh, fucking hell. Anyway, that'll do it. I got to go pick up my kids now from fucking three doors down. This is a nightmare. Anyway, fucking enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.